Well, hello again. In this example, you will examine the joint method of analysis for trusses. We will look at this particular truss for which we have already identified the reactions and we have already identified the orientation of typical members. You've got the loads being applied at the panel points and so we should be ready to move on. But before we do any calculations, let's note that the truss is actually symmetric and thus only requires us to analyze half of the truss. For example, if we find the force in bar AB, we will then automatically know what the force is in bar DE. So we're going to go ahead and start by analyzing joint A, and we will sketch the free body diagram for that particular joint, starting with the forces that we already know are being applied, 135 pounds here and the 540 pounds here. Then we will go ahead and sketch on the unknown forces for the bars that are attached in here. And what we always do is assume the unknown forces in the bars to be in tension, and that means that the arrows will point out from the joint itself. Then let's go ahead and get the horizontal and vertical components for bar AB. So that'll be 2 square root of 5 and AB and 1 over square root of 5 and AB. That accounts for all the forces that are at the joint and also the unknown bar forces at the joint. So that's a complete free body diagram and we are prepared to begin writing equilibrium equations. So with some forces in the y direction, 135 pounds plus 540 pounds plus 1 over square root of 5 and AB and all that is going to be equal to 0 and AB will then be computed to be negative 905.6 pounds. The next equilibrium equation we will sum forces in the x direction and so we only have two forces here it is that 905.6, or rather the horizontal component of that, plus NAF, and all that is equal to zero, so we get NAF is equal to 810 pounds, and that is positive. It is worthwhile to note at this stage that there was logic in the sequence of equilibrium equations I chose. I wanted to make sure, if at all possible, that I could write equilibrium equations that were a function of only one unknown. Had I started by summing forces in the x direction, I would have had my unknown force NAF and my unknown force NAB in that equation. Now while that's not impossible to deal with, it does make things just a little bit more cumbersome. So whenever possible, start with equations of equilibrium that have only one unknown in it. So let's move on to joint B. Now let's look at this. We have two bars going into joint B for which we don't know the forces. We have one bar going in that we already do have the forces computed for that. So with that, we can then write the equilibrium equation for it. So here's the known applied force, 270. Here's the vertical and horizontal components of the unknown. So 1 over square root of 5 NBC, 2 over square root of 5 NBC, 2 over square root of 13 NBF, and 3 over square root of 13 NBF. So that handles the unknowns. Let's go ahead and handle that known force of NAB but we're going to break it into its components as well. So this will be negative 810. Now notice what I just did there. I sketched the arrow as if it is in tension and then I gave the true value for that particular force. And I will do the same thing here. Now you may ask, well where did those come from? Well actually, if you look at this, it's 2 over the square root of 5 in AB. And this one here is 1 over the square root of 5 N AB. And so with that we know the value of NAB. We just computed that previously, didn't we? That's this one right here. 
So we went ahead and did the calculation and found the vertical and horizontal components. Now we are prepared to run equilibrium on this. I'm going to go ahead and sum forces in the y direction. This will give me negative 270 pounds minus a negative 405 pounds plus 1 over square root of 5 NBC minus 3 over square root of 13 NBF and all that is equal to 0. You're going to notice there's two unknowns in that. In this particular case there was not a possibility to choose an equilibrium equation that had only one unknown. So we're going to have to move on summing forces in the x-direction and that will be a negative negative 810 pounds plus 2 over the square root of 5 NBC plus 3 over the square root of 13 NBF and this is equal to 0. So what you have here is you have two equations and two unknowns. You have to do a simultaneous solution and if you do that you'll get NBF is equal to negative 243.4 pounds and NBC is equal to negative 754.7 pounds. Okay, so let's go back to the basic truss and let's make sure that we've identified the ones that we know already. We know this force, this force, this force, and this force. So in order to complete half of the truss, I will need to do joint F, which would then find me this one and this one. And that would be enough to complete this particular analysis. So let's move on to joint F here. Let's go ahead and get our unknown quantities on here. 3 over the square root of 13 NFC. 2 over the square root of 13 NFC. We also have NFG coming in. We have horizontal member coming in here and that has 810 pounds and then you also have the vertical and horizontal components of bar BF coming in. This will give us negative 135 and this one will give us negative 202.5. Let's make sure you know where those came from though. This one was found by computing 3 over the square root of 13 of NBF and this one was found by computing 2 over the square root of 13 NBF there. Now we can run equilibrium equations. I'll go ahead and sum forces in the y direction. This is negative 202.5 pounds plus 3 over the square root of 13 NFC. That is equal to 0. So NFC is equal to 243.4 pounds and then we'll go ahead and sum forces in the x direction. This will be negative 810 pounds minus a negative 135 pounds plus 2 over the square root of 13 times 243.4 pounds. That's what we just found for NFC and that will be plus NFG and all of that will work out to be 0 thus we find NFG is equal to 540 pounds. That is NFG. Okay, so we have now found enough of the bar forces to be able to fill out a summary table. So let's come back here. We will get it. This is 905.6 pounds, 810 pounds, 754.7 pounds, 243.4, 243.4, and 540. Now you're going to notice when I put it in the summary table, none of those have signs on them. So what you would do is you'd go back to the original where we did the computation. If it had a negative, such as for bar AB, we would identify that bar as being in compression. If it was positive, as we found for bar AF, 
we would identify that to be intention. And in a like fashion, we would then find that these sets of bars are in compression and these sets of bars are in tension. That concludes this example, and as always, it's a beautiful day for studying structures. <laughs>